Welcome to Pitch Brand Talk, where insights meet innovation in the world of brands. Today, we are exploring the world of Ayurvedic skincare with a brand that blends ancient Ayurvedic principles with modern skincare. So let's welcome Swagatika Das, co-founder of Nat Habit. Hi, Swagatika. I'm so happy to host you. Hi, Ritika. I'm very, very excited to be here. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. And, and you know... We talked about how your focus is on blending ancient Ayurvedic principles with modern skincare needs. So how do you strike the balance between traditional and contemporary beauty expectations and also sort of meet the demands of the consumers? See, one thing that is common underlying, uh, whether it's traditional or today, is the fact that you need nutrition to give effective results. Okay. Uh, the only difference is that in the traditional processes, the processes were a little more elaborate. You didn't have the right machinery. You didn't have the right science, the technology to extract the best out of the ingredients. Traditional days, you also had certain species of ingredients which were high grade. And today you might not have that ingredient available at all. So how do you right. find alternatives? Right. The third piece is in the traditional days, you uh, were focused on a certain kind of convenience and expectation, right? But if you have a certain different expectation because the lifestyle has changed, because your skin has changed, because how your skin is reacting has changed to the environment, right? So then the needs are different. So how do you tweak right. that same knowledge that you have? Are you with the principles that you have? Suppose the principle is around nanotechnology of making a paste, right? You use that principle, but maybe you are using a different machinery, but maybe you're targeting a different problem that you're trying to solve for today's day and age, right? Right. So, but the underlying thing remains the same. Use very high quality, high grade materials. Uh, mm -hmm. Make sure that you're extracting the best nutrition out of them. Whatever processing is required to extract the best nutrition and then deliver it in the best format, fastest format to your skin and hair so that you meet today's needs. Right. I mean, I've heard you talk a lot, lot about fresh Ayurveda. So you can you may maybe touch upon that and how daily made products offer a sort of a superior potency and what this also means for the consumer as you know, in right. terms of results or satisfaction. Right. Sure. Uh, see, um, whenever you're doing, you're consuming anything out of nature, right? You can get the best out of it when it's fresh. Right. If you don't right. let it stay fresh, then you'll have to use a number of other chemicals, fortifiers, preservatives, different things, stabilizers, to make sure that nutrition is intact. You can't really consume it just as it is. Otherwise, it must have degraded. Right. We said we will use that fresh format in its maximum potency, right? But we don't want to use any kind of chemicals around it. So then how do you make sure that it reaches your skin and hair very quickly? You can only do it if you're processing it fresh, making it fresh on a daily basis, making sure that it reaches to the consumer as fast as possible. And after mm -hmm. that also, it has a limited shelf life. Okay, right. so That is what fresh is about. On top of it is that layer of Ayurveda, which is the understanding of ingredients, the understanding of every active compound that is inside this ingredient. And then how do you leverage? Do you need heating in this? Do you need decoction in this? Do you need a special sonic force behind extraction of a compound, all of those are special processes that make sure that the nutrition level goes up for the best quality ingredient. So only ingredient right. is not enough, only processing is not enough. Both of them have to come hand in hand and they have to be fresh and fresh made. That together right. is fresh Ayurveda. Right. And I mean, I'm just curious, how do you put it all together when you are producing products at scale? I mean, there has to be some secret yeah, to... Yeah, <laughs> Uh, actually, actually, the supply chain is a is a nightmare uh, to start off with, right? So, mm -hmm. but we when we started into 2020, 2019, 2020, we were very clear that this is going to be a nightmare, right? If you want to maintain the standard and that scale, build up yeah. from here on, right? Right from day one, we had national players uh, feeding into our supply chain system. We made okay. sure that recognition of the highest grade is possible at our own lab. You are not just mm -hmm. trusting the vendor to tell you what is that grade, right? So a lot of this investment into R&D and supply chain went way back. Uh, we also built out an entire ERP technology that is particular or special to us. Right? So ERPs are not available for fresh manufacturing just in time uh, handling of 800,000 ingredients. Right? Um, how do you manage the just in time supply chain for different ingredients? And you're making about 250 to 300 SKUs on a daily basis. 
so all of that we required certain technology and that also we invested into only then right. is this you know nightmare i'm sure will or easy yes absolutely uh, but also you know you spoke about how you have this great fusion uh, of you know ayurveda and modern needs for skin care you have a great product you have an, a nightmare but a functional supply chain going on yeah. but how do you effectively communicate this to your uh, you know consumer also from a marketing standpoint by talk about especially right today's day and age right see the natural part is very easy okay uh, especially for the indian consumer fresh is just so given that when it's fresh it's the purest right mm. uh it's purer than pure for the consumer uh, so fresh is very easy and it is very easy for us to show them who we are because we are truly this right you come to our kitchen you visit our kitchen you see our kitchen we uh, show videos of what we do uh, just being honest was enough uh, right and people got it that this is the purest form of nature that you could get uh, right. what is difficult is yes okay you're the most natural okay but will it work on my skin uh, you know maybe you are 100% natural and somebody is 80% natural or 90% natural but maybe they are working for the skin i don't know what that efficacy level is or maybe yeah. i don't choose natural at all for the time being let me try something which is chemical okay but it's maybe safe for me right right so efficacy was always a question and it's not very easy to explain to people that this is going to work unless you start using that product okay yeah. so that's when you know of course you know word of mouth is there your products are great so they are working you hear from them but from a line of communication you needed something very powerful to tell them what is the science that is going behind this right, right. so this is the, the campaign that we have launched now is particularly focused on telling you that fresh ayurveda is not about being pure or how it is in natural that is there right. right without that you are you're not building a safe offering for people but what right. is more important is fresh ayurveda is harnessing the power of nature to give you something effective it is not safe for it's not 100% natural for the heck of being 100% natural right it's natural and effective that is the communication that we are doing today uh, with a campaign that is live right now right right and you know uh, as consumers are becoming more and more aware the beauty industry especially is facing you know a lot of scrutiny be it around green washing or you know uh, be it about uh, calling out uh, brands for their yeah. hypocrisy at certain levels yeah. so yeah. how does the nat have it ensure transparency and maintain consumer trust while promoting authenticity and also with the consumers being so skeptical uh, of brands claiming to be natural how do you sort of differentiate that habit from competitors uh it seems you you rightly pointed out right it's, it's a world of green washing sadly um but i'm glad with a lot of knowledge floating out there um, in in the social media in the digital world people at least know that they have to be a little skeptical okay uh i don't like this world of fear but i like the world of being knowledgeable right so you at least have the knowledge that everything that you're taking in in the name of nature is not necessarily nature right now how do you trust uh sadly there isn't any brand that is hundred percent natural so uh you know pretty much everything is based out of the same formulation with some extracts here and they're coming out of nature right uh for us it's easy because you're making it all 100% natural you can show it to them you can basically we even have nat visits where people come in and see how we are making them right so it's it's very easy for people to believe us right but if there's another brand tomorrow who's wanting to do something uh whatever that claim is right it's so difficult for them and i'm i'm very very i don't know what the right answer is i am just sorry for the consumer who just has to take uh things the way they come by the word and they wouldn't necessarily have a lot to believe in but i think knowledge is power the more you understand the ingredient names sometimes people are okay with the terminology which is familiar like uh, let's say vitamin c okay the vitamin c can be natural it can be chemical all right but you read vitamin c thinking that it is natural it's derived from a natural source uh they don't even understand what what the right name of vitamin c is what is the scientific name correct so people fall for certain gimmicks which i would really hope that people don't over time with more knowledge uh and that's when clarity comes in right and i'm assuming larger brands will not lie on their back 
uh, they will have to still give out the actual names of the ingredients. And with that, with that help, people will be able to understand what is it that they are using. Right. You mentioned with vitamin C and all I could think of was orange peels and, you know, that was <laughs> the first visual that came to my head. Correct. But, right. you know, because that's, that's what you've been seeing, right? On yeah. all the advertisements. Even, for example, we write vitamin C, hamare paas ulta hota. you know what happens? So people ask us that, where is your vitamin C? We said our vitamin C is coming from the kiwi juice that we have put in into that, right? We have put in uh, both sweet orange as well as bitter orange into it, which is what is rendering the vitamin C. We have put amla right. into it, which is rendering the vitamin C. Right. Now, uh, but people expect that, you know, when it's vitamin C, there should be an ingredient which is vitamin C. Yeah, particularly. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. you're also positioning that habit on the path to achieving about INR 300 crore, so top line. Yeah. So yeah. what will be the key drivers that will help you reach this milestone? And are you on track to achieve that now? Right. See, uh, two very big forces out here will be um, getting more consumers into your fold. So uh, we still are at very, very minimal levels of awareness today. I think that's the biggest job to be done and hence the brand campaign launch also. Uh, the second big piece is um, a few launches uh, in both the hair and the skin category, especially the skin, which uh, is a smaller part of our portfolio today. Um, and it's gradually, it, it is the one that is growing fastest and uh, it's something that we want to grow even further. So um, those two will be the bigger ones, awareness and creating certain, um, you know, introducing certain things into our portfolio that can make our skincare portfolio very strong. As well. So, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, how do, how do you sort of adapt your marketing strategies for different consumer demographics also? Because we talk about your marketing uh, approach, but uh, I would like to delve more into your strategy, how you're approaching, you know, metro versus non-metro, you know, what are your significant markets and uh, yeah basically that okay um see significant markets are the top 10 cities um <laughs> that's the population that is ready to invest into good quality skin and hair care um we are not expensive we're not luxury we're not premium but we're still a prestige brand and there is a certain pricing um you know attached to that quality that uh, we're trying to uh, offer so, um, hence, um, you will notice that a lot of our consumers, big, large chunk of our consumers actually come from metros. But when it comes to advertising, uh, initially we had thought there'll probably be regional differences um, between the north and the south, and even for that matter, east and west as well. Uh, but what okay. is coming out is very early on, we realized that Fresh was such a strong proposition that everybody understood it. So we didn't have to go a very different way uh, in terms of communicating. Uh, the second right. piece that was coming along is shopper journey, right? Because we're digital first, um, it's not like you're doing offline work. So hence the strategies in shopper journey is not very different. Uh, it's all pretty similar across geographies. Um, a little bit of differentiation in what people choose. Uh, let's say a 25 year old is a little different from a 35 year old. And that PG that we have is a 25 to 35 year old, right? So 25 year old is a little more bent towards Modern form factors like a hair mask is, um, uh, you know, prone to, uh, let's say, a face malai, but a 35-year-old also wants to invest into oils, right? So there's a little bit of difference there, and hence what, you, what product are you using to hook on that customer? That difference is there. Uh, regional differences is not much. Right, right. So uh, age-wise, you have to target different yeah. age Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, and, you know, with uh, consumers increasingly demanding more, you know, clean and green beauty products, how do you sort of see the role of Ayurveda evolving in modern uh, skincare? And uh, uh, would you say this is the resurgence of Ayurveda in skincare? I'm sure it is, but I would like to hear it from you. Um, let's see. Ayurveda was always considered to be natural. And natural was considered to be clean, even though they're not all the same. But at least for the Indian consumer, that's that's what it was. So from that lens, uh, the you know the boxes are all ticked. But what people didn't understand was 
uh, the problem was that there were some people always who understood how Ayurveda worked, right? Who always believed that nature had the power, and Ayurveda was harnessing right. it, right? So then right. it becomes easier to go to an Ayurveda brand. On me, say whatever is better for you, you choose that brand. But majority of people don't understand how Ayurveda works, and that is the bigger problem to be solved. Also, Ayurveda was always used in a legacy format, right? So let's say a brand comes up with a hair oil and says that I have used 50 processes. I call this process X Y Z. I've used 20 ingredients, and that's it, right? And that's what makes my oil great. I'm not saying yeah. no that it doesn't make your oil great, but you've not yeah. fundamentally taken the principles of understanding. Yes, you know, thousand years back that ingredient was great, right? Today is that ingredient available in the best grade, right? Are you even, yeah. you know, taking out the best active compound out of it? Right. Uh, You know, a thousand years back, maybe five hours was what was needed to make that oil. Today, do you need five hours, or do you need two hours, do you need ten hours? What temperature yeah. conditions? What pressure conditions? There is, you know, there is no the science behind it. So people just use legacy formats right. and legacy knowledge and call it out. As if you trust legacy, then well and good. Otherwise, the modern consumer is just left blank. So right. that that's the problem that we are trying to solve for, and not just take an Ayurveda for the heck of it, but. Bring in logic, bring in science behind it. You know, tweak it to the modern day needs and use, and then offer it. Right. You mentioned that the major problem is the lack of awareness and education amongst your consumers. So then, what role does customer education play in building trust for, especially Ayurvedic skincare brands? And how do you approach it at at uh, Nata? uh so um we started our educational journey um with ingredients first um what ingredients has watched what nutrition how much what does it do how does it help etc uh we gradually amping up this education to help people understand what is the how are you harnessing that nutrition right what exactly are you doing to make sure that you are getting the best nutrition out of it i have an almond oil somebody else has an almond oil right why is my almond oil better like right? what what are you doing and what other things should you be looking for to get the best almond oil from somewhere so those are the pieces that we are taking upon ourselves so that the consumer is better informed Right, right, and uh, you know, as an Ayurvedic skincare brand, while you talked about how you know knowing what the compound is the best out of a very popular ingredient that has been used for right. years and years, and all the other aspects, but as an Ayurvedic brand, what do you think are your biggest challenges and opportunities in scaling a beauty brand like this? Um, the challenges of education, a uh, big one is education. Right. Um, there are natural believers of Ayurveda, very default ones. So that's a small set. And mm-hmm. as you know, we move away from the millennials to the Gen Z, who have not even grown up with their mothers yeah. doing something, etc. Uh, there's a lot of educational work to be done there. So that's the uh, challenge. But that's 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 also an opportunity because opportunity in a way that uh, this world is moving towards. sustainability uh there needs to be clean beauty in there there needs to be safety uh right. there needs to be thought for the environment and all yes. of that will fall back upon natural and ayurvedic brands and that's an opportunity to be tapped into so if you do it right you take along the consumer with you tell them everything that is going on why are you doing x y z uh right. and there's something to be won there Right, and uh, uh, looking ahead, what are the next big plans that we can, you know, next new product launches or innovations that we can as- expect from Nat Habit, both in terms of product offering and also marketing strategies. Um, see, marketing strategy is going to be, um, as I said, uh, inform the customer how are we working on this nutritional piece, which right. is helping yourself really come alive, uh, thrive, mm-hmm. and hence. you know you're really breathing life into your beauty that's that's the marketing uh, route that we're taking from a launch perspective i think it will be too early to comment right now uh, but like i said uh, a bunch of products in the skin care space um, and very very heavy on efficacy um, that's that's what you can expect from um, us right any specific plans that you may have for the festive season for the festive season okay um actually this um this launch campaign was meant for that on uh, that's one day right. piece uh also what we do is uh we every year during diwali we come up with prosperity candles these are handmade mm-hmm. recycled candles so all the waxes mm-hmm. butters oils that you have um, have burnt out there um shelf life from 
a skin nutrition perspective or a hair nutrition perspective can still be used into wax candles so we use soy right. wax no paraffin at all okay so only soy right. wax beeswax oils recycled oils all of that go in and we make candles uh, i think they're going live today or tomorrow um so that's that's one big one uh, uh rest you know there is always uh, a little bit of sale here and there uh, some cheer up that we do yeah. for customers um some events that we participate with our partners like uh, amazon nike etc um yeah that's that's what we do for uh, fifth trip thank you thank you so much and thank you for taking out the time it's a pleasure thank you